I'm Senator Bernie Sanders. Very pleased to be here with my colleagues. Uh, we're going to do everything uh, that we can uh, to make sure that the Postal Service in the 21st century is as robust and strong for the American people as possible. And I want to begin by thanking Senator Durbin uh, for uh, arranging for this important press conference for the work that he's been doing in the last week in bringing many of us together. Uh, I am very pleased that the Postal Service has announced today that it will be imposing a moratorium on closing or consolidating post offices and mail processing facilities until May 15th. This moratorium will give Congress the time it needs to enact comprehensive postal reform to protect universal service while ensuring the Postal Service will succeed in the 21st century. Uh, last week, I offered a letter signed by 22 senators calling for a similar moratorium, and I'm glad we were able to work with the Postal Service to impose this moratorium voluntarily. Uh, specifically, the moratorium that has been agreed upon today will prevent the Postal Service from publicly announcing the closure or consolidation of some 3,700 mostly rural po post offices and over 250 mail processing facilities until May 15th. I have looked at the numbers. Every member of the Senate has looked at the numbers. We understand that the Postal Service has serious financial problems. But the concern that I had, and I think that many of my colleagues had, is that we need postal reform legislation to be debated and passed on the floor of the Senate and on the floor of the House, which will begin addressing many of these problems. Some of these problems include uh, very serious accounting uh, issues. Uh, as many people know, uh, the Postal Service has a requirement to pre-fund 75 years' worth of retiree health benefits over the next 10 years. There is no other government agency coming anywhere close to imposing that mandate, and we don't know of any private corporation that has to do it as well. There are other retirement issues uh, that are also negatively impacting the Postal Service. Furthermore, for whatever reason, the Postal Service, by law, has been restricted in ways that they can raise revenue. Let me just give you a few very simple examples. In my rural state of Vermont, you go to a rural post office, and somebody walks in and says, hey, I want you to notarize my letter. By law, the clerk cannot notarize the letter. I want to get a fishing license. I want to get a hunting license. Cannot be done by law. So one of the areas that we are looking at is to give the Postal Service more flexibility, more entrepreneurial uh, capabilities in order to raise revenue and serve the needs of their constituents. So bottom line here is, as a result of this moratorium, we're going to do everything we can to bring legislation onto the floor. There will be disagreements. But at least let the elected representatives of this country do their best to forge legislation which will address these problems rather than having the Postal Service arbitrarily make those decisions for the American people. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dick, uh, Senator Dick Durbin. Bernie, thanks a lot for your leadership on this. We appreciate it. Uh, I just got off the phone with Daryl Issa, who is the House Chairman responsible for postal reform. I've spoken yesterday and today with Senator Joe Lieberman about uh, the agreement which we reached last night with the Postmaster General and the Chairman of the Board of Governors, Thurgood Marshall. Uh, this is an opportunity and a challenge. There are very few functions of government which touch as many Americans as the post office. Every single one of us relies on that post office for some part of our lives. Now, I understand the role of the post office has changed, and I understand their revenues have changed, and we have a challenge to acknowledge those changes and build U.S. Postal Service for the 21st century. What we have achieved now with this agreement is the understanding that the House and the Senate have until May 15th to reach an agreement for postal reform which will bring the Postal Service to a financial status where they can continue and expand operations. We met with Postmaster General last night. It's a grim story. They faced a dramatic downturn in first-class mail. More and more people paying their bills over the Internet, using email, and it's come at the expense of the Post Office. So they have to find a new approach. Senator Sanders has talked about some. We each have many ideas. 
And often, when we would bring them up last night to the Postmaster General, he'd say, I'd love to do it, but the law won't allow it. At one point, Senator Sanders said, we make the laws. And so it's our turn <laughs> to change the laws, if necessary, to make the changes, to save the money, to save the Postal Service. When it's all said and done, this is a challenge to Congress. Put up or shut up. If you don't like what the Postal Service has put forward in terms of closing processing facilities and post offices and eliminating jobs, come up with a better approach. It's a challenge we need to accept. This agreement with the Postal Service gives us that opportunity. One of the concerns that I, speaking for myself, have had is, um, to say the very least, I, I, I think the post office has not been terrible, terribly entrepreneurial you know, thinking about ways that they can do things to bring more revenue in. And in fairness to the post office, as the postmaster general said uh, just yesterday, uh, both of his hands are tied behind his back by law. So I want to give you just one little example. Uh, right now, as I understand that the Postal Service cannot accept uh, wine or beer to be mailed. And the uh, Carper uh, Collins bill, I think, allows them to do that. I gave you some other examples. Here are states all over this country facing very serious problems, and you've got rural post offices. If somebody in my state wants to inquire about food stamps or unemployment compensation, they may have to drive 30 miles to the state capital. Why can't a rural post office provide those services? What other entrepreneurial uh, postal services I understand that delivers about one-third of prescription drugs in America? There is a belief that they could do a lot more than that. Elderly people would prefer to get their their, their prescription drugs mailed to their homes rather than have to go to Walmarts and so forth. Have they been aggressive on, in that area as well? So I think there are a lot of ideas that we need to hear from people, entrepreneurial types, as to how we can increase revenue for the post office.